Democrats. Uh, hello. It's been about 10 years since uh, I was College Democrats president, and I am very happy to be up here again. Um, as I was thinking about this speech and preparing this speech, I, I, I got a little nostalgic, I got a little happy, and I got a little upset as well. Um, because I started thinking about what had happened and how much had happened since I was a member of the college stems. I, I thought to myself on why what, was I a Democrat to begin with, and um, well, the work that I do now, how that applies, is relevant to the Democratic Party. Now, a little bit about me, I'm a Obama King Democrat. <laughs> uh, I firmly stand behind my president, I always have and I always will. <laughs> and I also firmly stand behind Martin Luther King and his dream. And I get a little bothered when I see the shortcomings we still have of that dream today. So let's start why I became a Democrat. My mother. <laughs> my mom. Uh, my mom won't say her age, but let's say she came of age and right around 68. She looks pretty good for her age. <laughs> and uh, around that time, the Democratic Party was a very powerful force for the people. Civil rights movement, and the Civil Rights Act is a large part, I'm sure, of why my mother wanted me to be a Democrat. You know, but that's not all. She also, uh, every day we would come home and watch the news, and uh, she wouldn't just talk to me about uh, the things that happened in the 60s. She would also talk to me about the way her mother felt, my grandmother. She would talk to me about the awesome, stupendous actions that FDR made while he was president. And that is something that I think we need to continue to think about as Democrats and realize today. Because FDR stole, stand, stood bold for the values of the people, for the values of the disenfranchised, for the values of people like you and me. And we need to continue to see that. I want to see a Democratic Party that is what I was taught it should be, a party of the people. The Democratic Party has made many gains uh, throughout since 68. But because I firmly believe the wind is at our back, uh, briefly bring up a few shortcomings. You know, after 68, what happened? Uh, because I study a little bit, I read a little bit, I watch YouTube videos a little bit. <laughs> um, we know that, that, you know, we have the era of Nixon, declared war on drugs, which was a war on black and brown people. Be very clear about that today. And we see this hard right in the 80s to Reaganism, Reaganomics, and the propaganda come along, came along with the explosion of crack <coughs> and drugs and the rise of crime in many of our communities in cities, on college campuses. You know, and you see this progress, and the Democrats made a very smart decision that they had to come to re grips with reality of uh, the new reality that uh, we needed to compromise. But it's always bothered me the things that we've compromised on. 
Um, because what I've seen through my life is, you know, as I've grown older and older, I've seen far too many jobs shipped overseas. I've seen my friends and family fight to keep deep in Toledo. And that is a direct result of uh, neoliberalism and uh, for no other way to put it, uh, giving up, fighting for the people, which should always be the soul and the heart of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party should always be a party that's for the people. And we need to continue to do that. So we see other mistakes. We see far too many compromises. The Grover's way. We see a don't ask, don't tell policy that was completely unacceptable. And we see a crime bill that demonized me. But the reason I bring that up today is not to be sad about it, is not to argue about it, but to realize that there's lessons to be learned from it. We have to and we must continue to stand with the people. And, you know, I don't think we realize how much power we have as Democrats sometimes. I don't think we really realize how bad Bush messed things up. And we need to continue to press that point because things are still bad right now in America because of the mistakes of the conservative Bush policies that we went through. Why are so many, you know, and, and, and when we look at that, we have to realize why so many millennials, why so many college dims, why so many young dims are so skeptical and not as enthusiastic as we want them to be with the Democratic Party. But it's time. Time. I'm an activist. It's time. It's always time. And it's time for us to stand up. And it's time for us to unite together. It's time for us to unite together and realize all people should have a right to go to the bathroom. It's time we realize that. And it's time we stand up boldly for that as a party. It's time we realize as a party that our brown brothers and sisters are just trying to make their lives better and be citizens, and we need to accept them as citizens and treat them as such. It's time we take radical action right now to make sure women get equal pay for equal work, because that's crazy. That's crazy we still have to bring up that issue right now in 2016, and the time for that to stop is yesterday. It's time that we stand up as men. If I may talk to the men in the room for a second. To stand up against culture and society that is rape culture. It makes it seem like it's okay for these things to happen to women in our workplaces and especially here on our college campuses. We must demand that our nation be pro-quality of life. It is unacceptable for us to live in a country full of empty homes and homeless people. We must be unapologetically pro-quality of life and demand that anyone who works 40 hours a week should be able to feed their children and should be able to put a roof over their head. It's time that we stand up for not just the uninsured but the Un, for not just the un, uninsured, but the underinsured as well. And we make sure that health care is a right for all. It's time we make sure that clean water is a right for all. That clean air is a right for all. It's time we stop making these compromises. And it's time we stand up and be bold for what we believe in, which is standing for and with the people. 
I challenge you today to stand with the people unapologetically because that's when we become the Democratic Party that my mom taught me about. And I want us to be the Democratic Party that I teach my daughter about. A Democratic Party that stands up for the people. I challenge all of you and if all of us in this room stand together, we can stand with the people, we can make this Democratic Party the party of the future, and we cannot wait for it to happen. We can make it happen now. Thank you.